Uh, hello, thank you, everyone. So, yeah, I can move freely. Uh, I'm Robert. I'm here from the Multiverse X team. We've been actually rebranded two years ago. We've been Aaron, and we are in the space since 2018. The mainnet have launched in 2020, and we are heavily using Wasm, and I don't know why other blockchains are not using Wasm, because we proved that uh, that's the best execution mode, actually, for safe smart contract execution, which are pretty much faster than anything out there. And let's see why it's like. All right, so um, Wasm, how was our journey for Wasm? Um, Multiverse 6 is a layer one blockchain, like Ethereum or B Bitcoin, you might know, and then you can develop your own applications on top of it and run in a decentralized way. And the idea was that, okay, you have to find a virtual machine, a language, which executes in a deterministic way and which resolves some of the problems. At the first hand, we started with a formal VM known Yellow VM, but it was super slow. Then we checked out EVM. It was not so slow as a formal VM, but it was, again, stupidly slow. Then we just checked out, and at one fine time, we found Wasm. And it was like, at that time, with the first, uh, first runs, it was around 100 times faster than the EVM. It was a million times faster than, uh, than the formal VM, Yellow VM. And we started to have something on which we could work out. But what's blockchain actually, and what's the promise? So Bitcoin started roughly nine, uh, 50 years ago. And uh, I actually got into Bitcoin really early on in 2012. But uh, I didn't want to build anything on to top of Bitcoin because it was not scaling. It was slow and it was hard to build. And then a lot of years came and then met Multiverse 6. Uh, at that time, I wanted to create the most scalable chain out there. And the goal is to have like trustless transactions, smart contracts, tokens, financial inclusions for billions of people, and unstoppable global markets. Right now, or right now, at that time, the barriers were like resistance to change, like the world of Web 2 to move into Web 3, and then the, like the limitations of the first-gen uh, blockchains. And the limitations are a lot, like no scalability, huge costs, a lot of errors on smart contract platforms like Ethereum because of simple things like met overflows or replay attacks or one of the funniest things are re-entrancy attacks, which even the best builders or the most OG builders, original builders, have got into, and then billions of dollars were lost. Then there are like new other new things and new attack forms coming, like front running or minor extracted value. And people still are losing a lot of money because of bad design. So, we started with the hefty goal at that time called blockchain tri trilemma of scalability and decentralization and security cannot. You have to choose two out of the three. And in 2000, as early as in 2018, we demonstrated that it's not how things are, how things are because we can actually resolve everything through a sharded architecture and through a virtual machine which actually scales. Uh, we launched on mainnet in 2020, and then a lot of, lot of applications went on, and we are live since then without any faults. And actually, one of the fun things is that without, without users losing funds or without contracts getting hacked, which is, like, amazing. Uh, right now, there are more than 6,000 nodes running, 3,200 are validators, and then the cost is uh, sub-cent in 
games of cost, we can run at the current setup 30,000 transactions per second, and it's getting updated to run like until run like 100 k transactions per second at the end of the year. But imagine that this is running on low spec machines like dual core machines with 8 gigabytes of RAM and runs everything. Uh, the current ecosystem, we have around $2 billion uh, total value locked, and again, $800 more million dollars in DeFi, decentralized finance, more than 3,000 tokens, and more than 7,000 smart contracts, a lot of, lot of builders, and the builders actually first have to build a smart contract or use a smart contract. And that's where Space VM comes from. And it's here to unleash the potential for developers. And we've been out there in the beginning searching for the best VM and the, that VM which could offer us the best perspective to the future, not limiting users to a certain language, but to scale continuously and to uh, introduce more and more builders to the space of the blockchain. So I already spoke about this, uh, switching from Yellow VM. One of the first things we did with Yellow VM was a smart contract uh, based small uh, game named Crypto Bubble. And it was actually really slow, like two transactions per second. Uh, then when we switched to Wasm, we got into the thousands. Uh, we are still the only ones we could, which can execute thousands of smart, smart contracts execution per second. And this is needed in order to have an internet scale execution where everybody can deploy their applications on top of the blockchain then offer the primitives of history, authenticity, and trust, programmatic trust, trust from the blockchain. Because in the blockchain, it's not that you trust a person, but you can actually trust the code. And yeah, a lot of people don't know how the code looks like, but uh, those are the audits and those are the people who demonstrate to you that this code does whatever it should be. And in some of the new, new things we are working on is that we could actually formalize smart contracts and demonstrate, not we, one of our partners, Runtime Verification, working on it, that a smart contract is working according to a set of specifications, a set of specifications written in human language. Uh, giving out even more and more value to the users and more and more trust in the code. This is like our architecture. We have the node, which is running the blockchain thing, let's say. Uh, it runs the consensus mechanism. It runs the processing mechanism of the, smart, of the transactions, uh, storage, caching, and everything. And at one time, it gets into the smart or the VM, uh, which is the Space VM re renamed right now. Then we have a connector to the Wasmer. We are proudly using Wasmer since 2019. Uh, the single pass compiler, we use it and we make it the Wasm to execute only in a deterministic way, completely sandbox, and uh, we use a compiled code to run. And uh, because of this, and some other innovations I will talk about later, we can actually almost make uh, run the smart contracts as fast as in bare bone. The, for most of the smart contracts, it's 1.2 or 1.3 times slower than running the same code, same Rust code in bare, bare bone. And we made it this fast because we we, first, we are not using interpreted language, which is slow, but we used some of the functionalities Wasmer gives, and we built a few more into that in order to make ahead-of-time compilation working faster and to 
to have access to the ahead of time compiled instance in which we only, at every time, we only deserialize and execute. But later then, we build warm instances. Warm instances, it's one interesting thing in which you can make the WASM bytecode, you compile it, and we keep an, an object out of it. And before any execution, we only need to clean that object internally. Then you don't need to compile and execute because the compilation is there and you only execute. As we have super small smart contracts, uh, we'll explain a little bit later why, compilation, uh, we can execute super fast if we don't compile a lot of times. And uh, actually we can like uh, reduce execution time by 95% by, this, by actually going through warm instances. But it's a blockchain, so you have to make secure and you have to make it uh, secure and working at every time. So what you do is that if the warm instance gets corrupted or something like that, which actually didn't happen, but we have the code for, for this to work, then you try the ahead of time compilation deserialized object. Uh, you deserialize the object and you try to run that. And if, again, that one is corrupted for whatever reasons, uh, then you can simply recompile with uh, just-in-time compilation and run it. Uh, and it just works. So one of the things we much liked about the WASM VM is was like the stateless execution. We put everything in a sandbox. We don't give access to the smart contract to only to those bits and storages we want to give them, but actually not like direct access, but we copy it out. And then it has, the VM has its own cache on which the smart contract can execute whatever it wants. And if there is any kind of corruption detected, at every new execution, you are starting with a clean state. So there is like, you cannot corrupt the nodes running the blockchain, which is assuring almost three billions of dollars worth on chain, which is a lot. Uh, last year, I presented here like 4,000 swaps per second which was at that time a world record. A little bit of tweaking here, tweaking there, making some more progress with uh, mathematics and libraries, and a little bit bigger, better laptop, and then you can achieve over 5,500 swaps per second, which is like a, a, on a single thread on a laptop, which could, uh, which is actually a world record of execution. And that's why I don't know why others are not using WASM. And they are using uh, late, late things. Um, but our architecture has to be prepared for the future. So we make it sure that how the code is built is any new VM or any new module can tap, be tapped into it because we have a lot of interfaces and a lot of modules. And I welcome everybody. If all our code is open sourced, so it's on GitHub, and everybody can take a look and take whatever they like from that. And also from one of the newest innovations we have, which is called sovereign shards or chains, you can have an SDK through which you can run your own blockchain, if you want in any kind of setting you want, and then you can build your own VM if you, uh, if you want. And add new primitives on top of your VM to make stuff faster and faster. So how do we, we, did we make the VM as fast as possible? Is that we, we don't only have the WASMR running at its performance, and like for the blockchain, you have to introduce a gas mechanism there where every opcode costs, uh, you have to make 
actually the the smart contract which is running, you have to make it Turing complete. And in order to make it Turing complete, you have to ensure that at X period of time, whatever happens in the contract, uh, it ends, the execution ends. And this you do super simply by introducing guess for every operation, and then if the guess you gave to the smart contract reaches to zero, you just stop the contract, so you made a Turing complete VM. And then on top of Wasm, uh, with how Wasmer and our Space VM is built, you have access as a developer not only to the opcodes of Wasm opcodes, like the normal ones, but you can have access to API directly from the Wasm into our libraries which we built, which have complex cryptography, uh, complex mathematics, elliptic curves. Uh, memory management is not needed at all in our case. We just give the, the contract two pages of memory, and then you can do on that, execute whatever you want. If you want more pages, you have to ask for it, so you pay gas, but actually no one is needing to do that because all the business logic can be executed in two pages. And we have then managed buffers. Managed buffers is like keeping another, a set, another cache for, the, for all your objects, which you ne don't necessarily want to bring to the WASM, but you want to execute something outside of the WASM in Go in our case you can have access to these kinds of managed buffers, map, vectors, list, and manipulate it through APIs. Uh, adding all these together and creating a new Rust framework, it means that we can have the smallest uh, smart contracts out there. S smart contracts are not like megabytes of data, as they are on some of the other WASM blockchains, but they are a few kilobytes. And then, as this is super small, the resulting comp compiled code is small again, and then you can execute faster and faster and faster. And like some of the things like mathematics, cryptography, managed buffers, elliptic curves, are like common goods, common API, which can be used for developers, so adding these built in to your VM for the space VM is just makes uh, better and easier for developers to create inside this thing. And then the managed types were like no need for extra memory on the WASM and then you can just have a special heap in which you have like integer pointers to your heap and then manipulate everything there executing super, super fast, which is important for us. Uh, then you can just read arguments, write arguments, delete arguments, change arguments, create new arguments, save all kinds of handles. And like, if you have an object, a bigger object, you need only an integer pointer for that object, not the whole object inside your WASM. Uh, memory and all it's manipulated outside of the execution, making it super, super fast. One of the other things we had to do is that in order to scale, we are the first blockchain out there who resolved sharding. Sharding is really known here in the web through world. Everybody uses sharding. But in like blockchain, everybody, because they didn't know how to resolve, they have global state in which everybody executes, which is not scaling. Then we created a first sharded, completely sharded mechanism. Um, and it's still in work, it's still working and great. And then we had to introduce asynchronous models as well. When you have cross shard smart contract calls, meaning that you have an execution of a smart contract, 
you create multiple asynchronous calls from your smart contract, and then the instance of your smart contract closes, the asynchronous calls goes outside to another shard, they get executed, and then you are assured that your contract will be called in a callback back. In the defined callbacks you want to define. Getting in closer and closer of how a sync and await works in the web world and actually makes it pretty logical to build. A few next things we want to even add into all of this is that we could add linear storage on top of our VM, making sure that the developer doesn't make uh, mistakes with his own storage. If a storage is, get, is read by a variable, then no, uh, nobody, until it's not relinquished, nobody else can touch that. It makes actually, uh, by default, you make developers to write good code, which is super important when you talk about money or talk about the, uh, decentralized autonomous applications which run 24-7. Then we have a new version for asynchronous calls. We, have, we want to go to optimistic deterministic parallel execution. So multiple smart contracts running at the same time. Then we have the sh sovereign shards which are an SDK through which you can launch your own blockchain for whatever you want and Actually, if you, you have to se separate blockchain and cryptography, uh, crypto, crypto is the money, but blockchain has those kinds of primitives which no other system or architecture can give you. And these are history, trust, authenticity. And in the world of post-AI, it's actually super important. Uh, a big piece of research goes into zero-knowledge proofs and proof of proofs, in which what we can do is to create proofs of correctness of execution, and not only that, but also proof of a, a binary to be according to a specifications written in human language. And this is, this can actually work outside of the crypto space where people can trust more the applications where there is a proof that this application runs uh, this kind of specification. The full idea is for, v for any VM is to make builders to enjoy building and make builders to build actually even more. Uh, and we make builders in general use Rust as a language to write smart contracts because it's high level, high level enough to make complex stuff, but actually it uh, compiles to those coin, ca kinds of small stuff, and you can create lower level hyper optimizations. And actually the whole optimization is written in our Rust framework. I think we will name our Rust framework Spacecraft SDK and then the, the developer doesn't have to worry about optimizations because the, the SDK will do the heavy lifting. Um, and as we are in a world where these kinds of uh, systems run with millions or billions of dollars, there is no, no one step when something could go wrong. You don't want to go wrong at all. Uh, like we managed to have four years without any downtime and four years without any smart contract hack, which is really great. And you have to ensure that everybody who builds in these kinds of open systems, because Multiverse 6 is a layer one scalable blockchain, it's an open market. Everybody can build, everybody can attach, and everybody can build on your applications on top of it. And this is what's happening in general on the DeFi, where multiple teams are building on the code of the others, and then creating more complex and complex 
applications, which in the end help the user to tackle more complex financial decisions and make it to make them to run efficiently and to enjoy actually the Web3. Then when you use Rust, uh, we started to add inside debugger, high level test coverage, uh, Mandos, a JSON-based JSON testing framework, then Rust integrators, and K-Framework by runtime verification, which actually made a formal verification of the whole VM uh, in order to add high-level proofs by them and then to verify even the contracts. These kinds of uh, uh, development process would benefit not only the Web3 world where everything is working, but everything uh, which needs a high level efficiency and security of correctness. I will only have four minutes, so I will go through a few steps without uh, actually getting into the details. But Multiverse X introduced a few more levels of innovation because Web3, using Web3, Web3 is, have, is hard. User have to enter, create a seed phrase, uh, enter into an exchange, buy some tokens, to have, to have, buy some tokens, send to your wallet, and after that you can start to enjoy it. And it's actually really hard to do it for any non-technical people. And uh, we made it easier. Uh, we introduced a few uh, new primitives, like guestless transactions, relay transactions, or paymasters, batch operations, a completely new token model, uh, also a guardian feature for your, your own wallet, and all in all, it makes the user can use Web3 as Web2. You can actually log in with your Google if you want, and enjoy all the processes without paying gas because the gas is paid by the application. So you can make games, you can have people come to you and uh, enjoy what you've built. Right now we have over 4,000 tokens. A lot of operations can go into one smart contract execution. Like we have examples of 20 contracts in the same execution with a lot of token operations, over 8,000 contracts. And then mass adoption for the blockchain can come when you have a safe environment. And Multiverse 6 is built to withstand everything and also to ensure safety for developers and safety for, for wallets as well. So no wallet draining, no thefts, no MEV, uh, minor extracted value, no re-entrance attacks. Uh, and also 30% royalties for developers, those who create and run applications on the system, introduced in the system. Uh, in 2024, we are going even faster with one second block times 100k uh, TPS, vertical scaling with parallel execution. Uh, right now we have uh, the most advanced uh, consensus mechanism uh, through scheduled transactions. We are the first to have it like parallel execution of the whole system between validators and uh, block producers. That's a new thing, but uh, this should go for a blockchain talk. And um, I will go into like one of the last things, and I will leave it with you with this. We have a fully integrated super application in which you can enjoy whatever I presented. And also developers have a hub there where they can have their applications. One of the things we are trying to go for from here on is that developers not only to write Rust, not only to write their smart contracts and use Wasm, but Wasm to be used for microservices and front-ends as well. As you can demonstrate 
for your users and for your applications that the front end they are running is actually the same code they should supposed to run. So you have a smart contract, you could attach uh, to near that smart contract, you could attach actually the front end code, WASM code, or a hash of the front end code, at least the business logic. And then at any time the user interacts, it has a direct, and this is saved in a blockchain, and then any time the user interacts with an application knows that, okay, I interact with this kind of application, this is the front end, this is a smart contract, in a seamless manner. Uh, tomorrow, my colleague Andre will have a workshop of how you can create smart contracts and how you can build on Multiverse 6, and even more things about why Wasm is great. And then, uh, thank you, everybody, and uh, feel free to ask me questions if there is anybody, or later near the beer or at the party. Thank you. Are there any questions? If there is no, thank you very much.